Hey everyone, it's Brandon, and uh, today we're going to be going over a new part of the screencast for Web Design Tuts, where we're going to be going over how to create your own background patterns for the web. Uh, today is a uh, special request from a couple different of our readers out there. Um, a couple of people have been asking how to create some basic carbon fiber textures, uh, so today we're going to be digging into that kind of stuff. Um, we're basically going to be creating four different versions of a carbon fiber pattern. Uh, the first one we're going to create is uh, probably the most basic one that you know most of you guys have seen you know all over the web. Uh, the next one we're going to create is a little bit bigger than that. Uh, then we're going to create a diagonal pattern, and then finally we're going to create a, almost kind of like a like a weave pattern um, in this fourth one. So uh, there is going to be a written tutorial that goes along with uh, this video tutorial. So. Uh, I hope you guys are able to uh, basically just watch the video in case uh, you hit any snags or hiccups as you're going through the written stuff. Um, so first, let's go ahead and dive in and create this first one. Uh, it's actually quite simple to create. We're going to create a basic 4 pixel by 4 pixel document. Um, and then obviously we're going to use our navigator panel to zoom in. Uh, let's go to 1600%. Um, we could even go further than that if we wanted to and go to 3200% and get really big in here. Um, let's open up our layer panel and kind of, you know, get an idea of what's going on here. Um, so basically what we have here is a 4 pixel by 4 pixel document. Um, we're going to get started by basically selecting the left half of our document, which should be 2 pixels by 2 pixels. Um, and we're going to select it from our uh, background layer, and I'm hitting Control J to create a copy of it. Uh, the next thing we're going to be creating um, is a basic gradient that's going to go over, so... Uh, all I'm doing is double clicking on the layer itself and selecting gradient overlay. Um, and then from here we have a basic black to white pattern or gradient. Um, but we want it to be a little bit darker than that. Um, you know, for the purpose of the video tutorial, I'm going to pick something that's a little bit more high contrast than, than we uh, used in the written one. Um, so, okay, we basically have that set up. The next thing we want to do is uh, create a new layer and then we're going to select this one and hit Control E. Uh, the reason we're doing that is basically we want to uh, flatten out that gradient layer. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the marquee tool and select one pixel from this. And we basically want to select layer via cut. And that's going to create a second uh, layer over here. Um, so now basically we have two different uh, layers of this. Um, and then on this one we're going to set it to you know 92%. You can set it to 95%. Um, you can go, you know, even down as far as like 85. Um, the point in what we're doing here is uh, you basically could complete the rest of the tutorial without doing this step. Um, but I like the subtle variation between uh, the two different colors of gray. Um, and we're only going to get that by, you know, basically dropping the opacity. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, if you drop this, uh, drop off the background layer, you guys can see that it is transparent now. Um, in our case, that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and grab the two layers. And I'm pressing Control E to merge the two layers. And now we're going to complete the basic step uh, that we're going to be completing in all of the other versions of this tutorial. Um, so basically, I'm grabbing the top two pixels. And then I'm going to nudge it down using the keyboard and the Move tool. And I'm doing the same thing on the bottom. So what we basically get is kind of this uh, you know, uh, complex checkerboard pattern um, that ultimately creates our carbon fiber texture. So the next thing we want to do is obviously just going to be to hit edit and then define pattern. And then let's open up a new document and try this out. Um, so if you guys have been following uh, the rest of this series, uh, we already have two other posts on it um, and we have quite a few other ones planned. Um, so you guys know by now that if you basically just use any you know shape that you want, um, we just draw it in there. And now that we've selected the define pattern, uh, we should now have it inside of our library under the pattern overlay. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the bottom, um, and the newest one that we've created is always going to be at the last. And we're going to hit OK. So that is our pattern right there. Um, the cool thing, because we have it transparent, um, is we can adjust it a little bit by uh, basically you know, adjusting the background color. Um, and that's it. Uh, now just a little trick I'm going to show you guys right here. Um, this is only for the video tutorial. I'm not even going to go over this in the written. I'm just going to riff off the script a little bit. Um, if you guys want to create some dynamic lighting effects, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. I like using this way. Um, I use a gradient overlay. Um, a basic black to white is going to be fine. Um, I'm going to set it to multiply. 
And then what we can do is we can mess around with this black color and bring it up just a little bit. And what you guys see is this, you know, kind of very, you know, basic overlay uh, pattern that, you know, kind of makes our carbon fiber a little bit more interesting on the eye. Um, and if you blend it properly, you can use it in a lot of different ways, um, you know, for buttons or background textures or anything like that. So that's one, uh, you know, just kind of quick little trick that I like to go through. Um, the next we're going to be creating is basically the larger version of the basic grid carbon fiber. Um, so let's go ahead and create that really quickly. Um, I think in our demo, um, let me just check the script here really quickly. I think we used a 12 pix by 12 uh, pixel document. No, in fact, it's actually 8 by 8. So let's go ahead and create a new one. And we're going to use 8 by 8. Now, obviously, you could use 12, you could use 20, you can use pretty much any size you want. Um, the basic ideas here are going to all be the same. So uh, we're going to start out, again, with an 8x8 document. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, um, and then I'm basically uh, going to draw out, I'm going to use my info panel to look at the size, um, a 4x4 four four square. Now, one thing you're going to notice in Photoshop, if you guys uh, have been looking at some of the other uh, versions of this tutorial, is sometimes when you're working in Photoshop and you draw a square, uh, it does this weird thing where it kind of feathers it out. So what we want to do at this point is uh, we're going to use our convert point tool, which is underneath the pen tool, to basically just uh, kind of sharpen this up and remove that you know ugly feathering on the side. We're going to move this down. We're going to make sure that we don't have any other feathering anywhere else. So that looks about right to me. Uh, so we're going to move this up. And so now we have a basic 4x4 four four block. Um, I think inside the uh, written demo, we colored it red, just to illustrate what was going on. Uh, so we're going to create a duplicate by pressing Control J. And again, just for uh, illustration, let's go ahead and make it into a blue color, just so we can you know, really easily see uh, what's going on here. Um, so obviously, in this first carbon fiber uh, that we created, we kind of had um, a dark block on the bottom and a light block on the top. So we kind of want to do that same thing here, except we don't want one continuous gradient. Uh, we want to have, you know, two distinct blocks that kind of creates that weave effect uh, that we have uh, in carbon fiber. So let's go ahead and dive in here. And the one on the top is going to be closer to a medium gray gradient. So we have a, a darker medium gray to a lighter medium gray. Um, and then one quick trick is I'm just going to offset this just a little bit. Um, the basic idea there is if you have a straight top to bottom, um, it creates, you know, a more boring effect than if you uh, basically offset it just a little bit. You guys can, you know, use pretty much any angle that you want. Um, just make sure you keep it the same as uh, the top and the bottom. So it creates, you know, almost like a simulation of a lighting effect. So we're going to copy that. Um, and once again, I'm simply going to copy over the layer style to the bottom. But obviously on the bottom, we want to make the gradient a little bit darker. Um, in our case, we're going to make it a lot darker because uh, we want to make this... Uh, kind of pop out on the video itself. All right, so we have a light or a lighter dark gray to a very dark gray. It's almost black down here. So that's that. And once again, we're going to perform our little uh, flip trick where we're just nudging these over and we're moving the top one down to the bottom and the bottom one down to the top. And once again, we're just going to uh, select Edit, Define Pattern. And let's go ahead and try that out one more time. And there you have it. You have your basic, uh, you know, big checkerboard carbon fiber pattern. So how do we mess around with this? Um, inside the written tutorial, I'm basically showing you guys how to add your own adjustment layers. Uh, to do that, we go under Layer. New adjustment layer, and then you can select brightness and contrast. You can select uh, curves if you want. Um, I think in the written version we used a level, so let's go ahead and use curves this time. Um, if you guys, oh, it's not letting me do it. Uh, we'll go ahead and try the levels one really quickly. Layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Perfect. Okay, so if you guys have not really messed around with adjustment layers before, um, they are actually pretty darn cool. Um, the great thing about them is uh, you basically add them over the rest of your layers 
Um, you can also mask them if you want. Um, but it allows you to kind of mess around with, you know, the overall contrast and lightness and darkness of your document um, through these little things. And the great thing about it is uh, you can, you know, turn them on and off really easily. Um, you can copy them and have, you know, basically, you know, two or three different variations if you want and kind of switch back and forth. Um, I really like them. Uh, they're a great way to, you know, basically mess around with your entire document and color scheme without really, you know, messing with any of the, uh, you know, in individual layers underneath. So, okay, let's go ahead and try this out one, uh, this one out really quickly. Now, you want to notice that because I'm selected on an adjustment layer, when I go to Edit, Define Pattern, it's grayed out. It won't let me uh, mess around with it. So what we want to do is select another layer, and then we get the option. And now we have our new pattern. And once again, let's go ahead and try this out really quickly. Um, what I didn't like about this one was that it was... Uh, kind of abrasive, a little bit too, you know, too much like a checkerboard. Um, so this new one I'm hoping is going to be a little bit low contrast, and that's exactly what we get here. So that's going to work out perfectly. If you guys want to mess around with, you know, making it even more subtle, obviously you can do that as well. Uh, so let's go back to our original comp, and now we want to create this uh, advanced kind of diagonal pattern. Um, this is going to be the most advanced document that, uh, uh, pattern that we're going to create in this uh, tutorial. Um, so it's probably worth uh, paying attention to the step-by-step -step, uh, in the written. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, obviously, we have a new document. It's at 30 pixels by 30 pixels. Now, I happen to pick uh, that particular size uh, just kind of off the top of my head. Um, you know, what you're basically looking for is, you know, good even numbers that uh, you can split the document in half. Now. Uh, the reason we want to be able to do that is obviously in this first step we're going to create a rectangle that is exactly half of the width of our document, so 15 pixels wide. And then in our case we're going to make it basically a third um, of the width in height. So it's going to be 5 pixels wide, if that makes sense. Um, now, obviously, uh, you know, we're kind of dealing with, the, you know, one of these, you know, pseudo-tessellating objects, so... Uh, you guys can really kind of mess around with this any way that you please. You can create longer versions. You can create, you know, short, skinny, or wide versions. It's it's really kind of up to you guys. Um, but the basic idea here is we have half of our document. Uh, we have, you know, a basic uh, rectangle up here, and we're going to add a gradient over it. Now, once again, we're, you know, dealing with, you know, some really basic gradients. I'm adding a little bit of an angle to it. Um, we're going to go from a, you know, kind of a dark gray over to a gray that's just a little bit lighter than that. Looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and make this one just a little bit darker. All right, so that's about perfect there. Um, obviously, we can go back here and uh, you know mess around with this. So let's create a duplicate of this. And all I'm going to do is uh, quickly make it five pixels by five pixels. We're going to remove the gradient by clearing the layer style. And we're just going to use our convert point tool just to remove that feathering once again. And we're going to make this one uh, pretty dark. It's nearly going to be black, actually. In fact, let's go ahead and make it black. Okay, so now we have our two basic parts of our little weave pattern. Um, so what I want to do next is I want to select both of them. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select Convert Smart Object. Now, you guys may not see the whole text on the screencast because uh, it crops kind of funny, but basically this is what we get, is one layer. Uh, if we want, we can always right-click and hit Edit Contents, and it's going to let us go back and edit the contents, uh, which, you know, again, it's a pretty basic trick, uh, but it's really useful when you get to the point where you have, you know, a bunch of different copies. So uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is just basically creating duplicates. You can use that, uh, basically select your layers and hit Control J, or you can right click and select Duplicate Layers. We're going to nudge them all over, then I'm going to select the big group from here again, hit Duplicate Layers once more, and we're going to nudge it over. We're basically trying to get this perfect little, uh, arrangement. And once again, we're just going to move this next one over once again, just five pixels. And we're going to select the left next one and move it up one because we're off just a little bit there. 
Um, and I, I can see a little bit of feathering here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Edit Contents once again. And we're going to go in using our navigator. And what we want to do here is we want to remove the feathering. Um, it should be pretty easy in, in our case. And we're just going to hit Save. And once we go back over here, it should remove it from, from you know inside of the actual document. I'm not going to worry about this uh, too much right now in the screencast, but just so you guys know, you can basically you know go back and forth with uh, the original smart object, hit save, and if you go back, it's you know as you can see right here, it's removed that feathering effect on all of the different layers, which is the great thing about using the smart object. Okay, cool. So the final step is a background layer. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and add this. We want the color to be dark but not quite the darkest color on the entire document we want to move it to the back obviously go a little bit lighter just kind of in the middle there and that may work just fine let's go back to uh let's go back to 600 percent and edit once again define pattern now obviously this one is going to be a little bit different from what we used inside of the demo um, strictly because I'm kind of working on the fly here. Um, so once again, we're going to pa Pattern Overlay. We're dropping down and we're selecting it from there. And now you have your nice diagonal pattern. Um, once again, this is one of those things where you can very easily mess around with all of this by adding an adjustment layer. Um, again, you can use brightness contrast, you can use levels, you can probably use curves as well. Um, but you can basically just kind of tinker around with this stuff um, until you get the desired effect. And the cool thing about this is you can, you know, pretty much create as many new patterns as you want um, just by creating new adjustment layers. So let's go ahead and test out this new one. It's going to be a little bit different. That's so different I can barely even see it. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and look at the last one we're going to be creating. Um, I happen to think this is the most fun out of all four. Um, you know, whether or not you guys get some use out of it on your projects is kind of up to you guys. Um, but we're going to start out with a basic 8x8 document. And as I've been, you know, kind of mentioning through this whole thing, uh, 8x8 just happens to be what I'm working with. Um, if you guys create a smaller document, the weave is going to be tighter, um, up to a point. You can't go too small because then you start to lose detail. Um, but you can go bigger and you can get, you know, really big, you know, documents as well. And, you know, conversely, when you go with a bigger document, you need to pay a lot more attention to details because you can see more in a bigger document. So uh, in this one, we're going with 8x8. We're going to add a basic rectangle for a background color. In my case, we're going to make it black. Um, and next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new rectangle. Um, in our case, it's going to be four pixels wide, and it's going to be as tall as our document. So this may take uh, just a little bit of tinkering here. Once again, with our convert point tool and the keyboard tool. And we're just going to nudge this up. Um, now, the bottom one can even be a little bit off. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so basically what we're going to do here is first we're going to rotate it um, using Control T and then I'm holding down the shift button and I want to get to 45 degrees. And this is, uh, I'm doing this a little bit differently from the written tutorial um, and I'll tell you why. We basically want to uh, show you guys how to, you know, kind of get your own customizations. So in our case, I want to show you guys, you know, how to kind of tighten up this weave just a little bit. You can really kind of play with it any way that you want. Um, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, go over the, to the gradient overlay. Um, we're going to set it to 135 because that's going to match our angle of the rectangle. And then what we basically want is we want it moving to the background color, which is black. And we want that first color to be something that's a little bit off. That looks pretty good right there. Um, and that should be pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and hit uh, Define Pattern once again. And this one's going to take a couple tries to get perfect, I think. Um, but let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right. So in our case, uh, 
not quite right because the weave is is too tight in this case and that gray looks a little bit uh, too too light as well so it's kind of popping off the document so um, in our case we can tweak with this uh, let's go ahead and create a new rectangle to compare so once again four pixels wide I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees And we're going to add that gradient at the 135 degree angle. And we're going to try making that, uh, that gray that it's fading up to up here a little bit darker so it's not so uh, high contrast. So once again, edit, define pattern. We're going to go back to our test document. And we're hoping to go from this you know kind of checked appearance uh, to a nice diagonal pattern, which in this case, uh, it's really dark. I don't know if you guys can see it on the screencast. Uh, it actually has kind of a nice effect. So that basically completes uh, what we're looking at for the basic uh, tutorial. I hope you guys uh, get something out of the video, and I hope you guys uh, are able to follow through the written version as well. So uh, thanks a lot for uh, paying attention, you guys, and I'll see you at the next version. Bye-bye.